Hey, 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 welcome back to the show. I wanted to kick today's episode off with a little explanation of exactly what this episode or presentation, I should say, actually is. So I recently spoke at an in-person event and the content that I shared was not only incredibly transformational for the audience, it was literally so much freaking fun for me. And I believe when you hear it and when you see it, you're going to feel the amount of joy that I had teaching this. So the team and I actually asked permission if we could share this talk and this presentation and boom, here we are. So grab a notebook and enjoy part one of this two-part training. Okay, cool. I've been sitting in the back of the room for the last day and a half, so it's nice to actually see all of your faces. This is so exciting. So yeah, we're talking today about organic, which is funny because so many people have come up on the stage and talked about the power of ads and and analytics and data, and I love all those things. And truth be told, I built my business organically. So that's sort of what I know, and that's what I know best, and that's what I teach our clients, and that's the stuff that our clients have gotten their best results from. So I'm gonna just take you through some slides. I am going to absolutely have you drinking water from a fire hose. Feel free to take screenshots of anything that you want. We're gonna move really, really fast. And I was a teacher, so I love slides. By the end of today, that you, you will be leaving hopefully learning that you potentially are leaving money on the table. So when it comes to content, we want to make sure that our organic content, whether that's on a social media platform like Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, there's a million of them, or emails is organic, podcast is organic, YouTube, long, short, long, short form, video, doesn't really matter, but you could be leaving money and, of course, impact on the table if you're not utilizing it well. So who here has ever experienced, kind of, be honest, post and pray? You're like, click, I hope it works, I hope it works. Yeah, cool. When we can start integrating some psychology into our content and really understanding the phases of our content throughout in between launches, it makes your launches easier. So we still historically, we started bringing ads in about a year ago, and historically, we are still having the most success with our organic. Does anyone know why? No, no, not about me, not about me. Why would our organic convert the highest? Absolutely. I have an ability to establish a deeper connection with the audience. My leads are much warmer, of course, than coming from cold traffic. Now, we will get traffic comes in cold. We'll get people come in from ads and they'll still buy, which is great. But it's cheaper for us if they're already in my audience. So we focus a lot on audience growth. We focus a lot on psychology and we focus a lot on buy-in. So what's something that you've done or something that you do in your life that maybe you don't even realize that you do or you do really well and other people wish that they could do it? Anything. Shout it out. Play keyboard. Play keyboard. What is it? Ah, oh, sisters. Handstands. We have another handstand person here. I, I'm just claiming that you are because, you know, Ninja Warrior and all. What else? Like bake a pa like bake cake. I mean, it could be, literally be anything. Just what are you good at? You're such a good listener. You always help solve my problems. You fill in the blank. Keep calm and cool. Keep calm and cool give advice. Yeah, so there's things that you're just good at. So. It wasn't until someone pointed out to me one of the things that I was good at. And one of the things that I was good at was building a business organically. And so what I decided to do was to turn that into a framework and I started teaching it to other people. And that same framework that I use helped me have consistent launches that are multiple six figures. So our last 18 launches in a row over the last four years have been $100,000 to $300,000 launches every single time, organically. 18 consistent launches in a row. Pretty good, right? We've had six and multiple six fig figure launches. This helped me generate a million dollars in 18 months. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just talking to Instagram. We used to live in New York City, and I was the girl like walking across the street talking to the phone. And occasionally people would be like, don't you feel awkward? I'm like, have you looked around? It's New York City. This is the least weird thing going on. Like me talking to my phone is the least weird thing. There's a guy wearing a tutu juggling over there. You know, you're like, really? So my email list was under 3K for a really long time. Truth. It wasn't until this last launch that we just closed the doors on September 30th, so just a month ago, that our email list is now 6,000. 6, Many of you in here have much larger email lists than I do. It's okay. It's not the size that matters, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I hit my first million with under 10K followers, and that was back in the day. I didn't have, there was no, you had to have swipe up in your stories, you know, you had to have 10K followers. And we were doing $300,000 launches with under 3,000 followers. I'm telling you this now because if you were to go over to my Instagram, I am Jessica DeRose, I have 4,000 followers. That's not a lot. There's people in the room who have a lot more than me. There's people in the room who have blue check marks. So two things. Number one, I used to have 26,000 followers. 
Still not a lot, but more impressive. And I decided to shut that account down. I actually changed my name, not legally. Like, I just changed my name. I went from Glazer. I chose the Glazer Blazer, by the way, if you were looking at my stories this morning. Yeah, I did not go with the Durango DeRose. So my married name is DeRose. He's back there. Hey. <laughs> and I decided at the beginning of this year, I'm going to shut my account down. I'm literally going to shut it off and I'm starting a brand new account with a brand new name. And I have a whole ton of reasons why, and we can unpack that at a different time. But if you look at my account, yeah, I only have 4,000 followers. So what am I here to teach you? Because I don't have a big list either. Well, I'm here to teach you the thing that my clients have done, right? They've generated over $20 million in sales, 12 millionaires from the ground up, and it's all organic. So the reason that I think you should know this is because it could have you no longer guessing, right? The posting and praying, not having to spend a lot of money on ads, not having to spend a lot of money on affiliates. Look, we use affiliate marketing, I love it, it's great, and you pay your affiliates out, right? And we run contests and we do bonuses, but if you could bring in more people organically and you can warm them up and get them hotter and you don't need all these fancy things, well, why wouldn't you do that? The other thing that I wanna tell you is if you look at my account, this is very much like a do as I say, not as I do. So aside from yesterday, I haven't posted in a month. That is super, super rare. I'm not gonna get into the story, a lot of you actually know it, but we've been going through something personal where I took a month away from work. So I had surgery, took a month away from work, it was an emergency thing that happened, and so just this past week was the first time I posted again. I'm still not quite ready to get myself back to post, but the cool thing is, when you have a strategy that I'm going to teach you today, it is okay. So when James talks about building the machine, we teach the same thing in our business, build the business machine. So, we have a three-part live series, just like James. Day one, I go live. Day two, I do a bonus. Day three, emergency surgery. We continue, yeah. Yeah, the launch continued. We went on with the launch. This was in September, this just happened. So, Instagram versus reality. I'm like this, doing my trainings for everybody. Basically, from the waist down, in pain with stitches, and then the waist up, I'm smiling, doing the thing. The machine worked, but it wasn't just the launch vehicle that was the machine, it was also our content. And it wasn't just about batching the content or repurposing the content, it was having a plan for the content. So I could take my foot off the pedal, see the shoes? <laughs> I could take my foot off the pedal and it didn't matter. That's what I'm teaching you. So who here wants to be called a thought leader or is called a thought leader? Let me explain that, what that is for a second. So being a thought leader is when you teach them how to think, they will come back to learn. This is some, some conscious stuff. When you teach them how to think, they will come back to learn. That's what you get to do in your content. So these images, while not attractive, does anyone know what they are? I created them yesterday, I was so proud. AI! <laughs> Jen is not here, but I was like, oh man, I'm gonna implement. So this is my AI, first try. First try, I'm real proud. So struggling creators are doing this. We're standing, a lot of us, are standing from the roof or the, the mountaintop and we're yelling about, this is your problem. This is my solution. I've been through this and we're trying to connect. We think we're doing it right. Pain point, pleasure point, right? Relatability. And what's happening is it's falling on deaf ear. There's the mouse. What? I can't hear you. All the way across the valley. This is what's happening to a lot of our content. It's falling. So successful creators are the ones who are bridging the gap. And this isn't just the, I know I've been there. It doesn't work anymore. In 2017, that worked. I know, I get it, I've been there. Imagine if, dot, 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 that doesn't work anymore. So what does work? Two things in messaging. You learn literally from the best. You've got James here, you've got Brandon here. Two things in messaging. Number one, you wanna solve a problem that they have, they being your ideal client, that they don't want to have anymore. So what's a problem that they have that they don't want to have anymore? And then in your content, the other thing that you want to do is you want to offer a solution for the desired outcome or the result that they want that they don't have yet. It's very simple, yeah? Okay, so I like to think of it as magic. When you think of magic, there's no right answer here, except if you get it wrong, I'm gonna be really upset, okay? What do you think of when you think of magic? Shout it out. Mystery. Mystery. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Wands, now we're getting closer. Sparkles. <laughs> Come on. Rabbits. Rabbits, thank you. <laughs> Rabbits, Rabbits coming out of a hat. Okay, stand up, do it. You have two choices, you have two choices. You can not play along and kind of roll your eyes right now, or you can decide that because you're in the room, you've already committed to the growth of your business, so you might as well just play along, yeah? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, cool. So, 
oh, that's so hard to see. So in order to bridge the gap, we want to pull the rabbit out of the hat. We want to create magic. And this happens in three ways. They could, you could shift the order of these ways, but to make sure that you remember these ways, you're going to do a dance with me. With me, that's the key word, with. Don't make me look stupid up here, okay? So, beliefs. It is our job, whether we're doing like a webinar, a video series, an email, you're writing content, it is our job to shift the belief, right? Debunk the myth, change the limiting belief, do the subconscious reprogramming. So, beliefs are bunny ears. So this with me, bunny ears. Cool, so we're gonna do the shifting of the belief. The second thing that we're going to do is then we're going to teach something. So when you teach, you're gonna wiggle your tail. G PG, 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 okay? So it's belief, and then teach, and then finally, you're gonna back that up with results. Case studies, testimonials, proof that it works. You're gonna use your rabbit feet, and you're gonna go to results. Okay, are you ready? So it goes like this. First you do a belief, then you do a teach, then you do a results. Again, belief, Teach, say it, results. If you don't say it, you're not going to remember it. Belief, teach, results. One more time. Belief, teach, results. Good. Give yourselves a hand. When you're creating content, it is your job to shift a belief, and then you teach something and you back it up with a result. You're not going to forget it now because you have a dance to go with it. When you're hosting a webinar, a masterclass, a challenge, you shift a belief, you teach a thing, and then you give a result. Does that make sense? Okay. I wasn't sure if you got that. So, how does this apply to launching? Well, it applies in a lot of ways. This is small, I know, but you already know this. The center here, the four, this is like the traditional launching framework, the four phases of launch by Jeff Walker. Have we all read that book? Cool. The rest of it is mine, because this is what I created. So I believe there are eight phases of launch. It starts with the green, which is the pre-pre-launch. This matters for your content. We move over to the announcement hype. James started talking about it, and I was thrilled because I teach the same thing. This is Hollywood hype. It's Christmas. It's coming up, right? New Year's, Hanukkah, whatever you celebrate. And they're telling you about the movie that's coming out in May of 2023, right? It's like Avatar 2 or Titanic or whatever it's going to be. And then for the next six months, you start seeing the actors and the actresses on talk shows and all of that. So they're building, they're building Hollywood hype. Then we come back into the traditional pre-launch. We go back out. This is where I put my conversion event or my launch vehicle. We come back in, then you obviously have your launch, your final push, post-launch, and then you're starting your program. I only put this up here for the visual learners in the room. I'm a visual learner. Yes, we're not spending time on this because you already know this or you wouldn't be here. What we are spending time with is the five stages of organic content. Ooh, look at all the phones. Tag me. Okay, so you know the pre-work and you know the post-work. That's really easy. That's really easy, we all know that. We're gonna focus a lot in the middle today. I will walk you through all five. So the pre-work is the dating. When Mike, thankfully, did not buy me a vacuum cleaner, but, but, but when he did get down on his knee and propose many, many years ago, it wasn't the way that he proposed that got me to say yes. I already knew I was going to say yes, and that's what we want our clients to say when they come to our conversion events. It wasn't how he asked or what he asked or the ring. I mean, it's nice, but that's not why I said yes. I already knew I was going to say yes because of what? Tell me, get involved. Relationship, what else? Trust, we'd spent years together. Memories, experience, communication. You get to do that with your clients. So the pre-work we know, the dating is all the market research and all that. Now, these three phases, if you get something out of today, aside from the dance, get this. In your content, you have these three phases. You want to validate, you want to tease, and you want to promote, and you want to do this on repeat. So when you validate, you are gauging that what you think they want is correct. The way that you're talking about it, the verbiage, the language, the slogans, the jargon, the offer, you have time in your content, organic content, to test this. We've been talking about testing a lot. So validating is really, really important. They're gonna tell you quickly if they don't like it, and I will be giving you examples. The second phase you're gonna move through, and depending on how long your launch is or your runway is, the amount of time you spend in each phase could change. It literally could be two days. Like, think Black Friday deal. It might be two days of validating, then two or three days of, of teasing, and then boom, you're into promotion. Or it could be weeks. The second part is teasing. If you do follow me, I started doing this, I do it all the time, I started doing this on my stories, so you'll notice it, where I'm teasing, and I did it in a sort of backhanded way, so we have a mastermind coming up that will open up for 2023. And so I had my audience yesterday vote on a mastermind logo. 
It doesn't matter, the logo doesn't matter, but what I'm teasing is it's coming, but I'm also getting their buy-in. Psychologically, when someone gets involved, when they vote on something like that, they are very curious to see what the outcome is. Now, did we have to choose whatever vote won? Absolutely not. But now when we promote it, people that voted are gonna be like, I wonder which one she picked. You can do this really simply with colors, logos, the front of your podcast cover, whatever it might be, this is a way for you to tease. Like James said, when he's doing his video series, he was filming himself behind the scenes as uh, Indiana Jones, right? So that's a way to tease. The third thing you're gonna do is then obviously promote it, which we don't have to spend too much time on because you know this is the problem and the solution, this is part of your offer. And then post-launch, most people fall off here, just like most people don't do a post-launch debrief. They like move on with their day and they don't check their data. It's like, oh, it's over, Whew. They do the same thing in their content. Ah, it's over. And then they stop talking about it and they switch back to whatever they were talking about and now you just exhausted your audience. You left them feeling high and dry. So it's really important that you actually spend time to recap what you did during that launch. But how did it turn out? How does that affect your clients or your audience? How does that help them? What, what should it mean to them? And if you are gonna do like a FOMO promo, a downsell or something like that, it would go there. We're gonna fly through these five things. So the pre-work, like I said, it's the questions, the conversations, it's the market research. It's really important here, and I'm so glad I nailed this because Brandon was talking about it. It's emotional language. This is the feeling stuff. It's not what they actually say they want, the vacuum, right? It's what they actually want. Make sure you're leaning into the emotion here and you're having those conversations. I'm gonna give you an example for each. This is tough to read, I know that, okay? But tell me more about that. That's a great question, right? How long have you been dealing with that? What's working for you? What do you like about that? These are three places I love to go. YouTube, so there's James's YouTube page. If I'm doing research and I, and I look up one of his things that he's teaching on YouTube, I can see other things that he's talking about. There's a pretty good chance that my ideal client would have that same problem. Google, Michael was talking about this. You go into Google, you search for something and other things will populate that are similar. And my favorite one is book reviews. What books are your clients or ideal clients reading? And then go read the reviews. They're real, they can't pay to put them on Google, okay? What are they saying? I loved this about the book, I hated this, I wish they talked more about that. So, validating. This content is to confirm and verify, like I said. Do they want it and are you speaking about it correctly? It's very simple, really important. Arguably the most important phase of these three phases. Because if you miss this, then you aren't getting the feedback that you're missing it. So. Some examples here. If I hosted a masterclass and solved this problem, would you be interested? What I did here is I took a picture of one of my posts and I'm just gonna read you, not the whole thing, but the hook here, which I'm gonna teach you how to do, calling all coaches who are on the launch hamster wheel, feeling exhausted, resentful, and questioning this whole entrepreneur thing. That's the hook. Then we go into the next piece where I start to talk about how they feel and how I understand that. And the call to action at the bottom is say yes in the comments if you'd be interested. Sorry, the line before that was, if I were to put together a masterclass breaking down our exact system that yields 100 to $300,000 launches on repeat and has been since 2018, would that be your jam? Comment yes if it would, okay? I'm validating. I'm just validating. And then I'll find out from them if they're interested or not. So the next one, there's lots of things up there, right? Hey, ideal client, I created X. Would you be interested? That's what you're doing in this content. After that, you wanna tease. We're gonna dangle that carrot. And you're gonna let them know that you're working on it behind the scenes. You wanna create excitement. You wanna get the buy-in here. So again, this is where it's gonna be really great when you let them help pick things. You're showing them behind the scenes pictures of you working in the lab, working on the thing, getting prepared, practicing. I have a, a client who does she speaks a lot, actually, for TikTok, funny enough, and she will put her phone up and do like a time-lapse video of herself in her room practicing her speech. So it's her pacing around the room just practicing. You can't hear anything. She'll put music over it, but then she'll say, you know, practicing for a talk that I'm giving tomorrow in LA for blah, 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 TikTok. That type of stuff. It's showing that behind the scenes and you're teasing people. So some examples here. This is literally a post in one of our free Facebook groups that we have, or our free Facebook group. If we share the psychology behind why content converts, so you no longer have to post and pray, would you be interested? Comment yes. This is it, it's just part of it. Down here, this is what I was talking about last night with the voting, so this is part of the teasing and the validating. And then the final one is promotion, and we know that we wanna just scream this from the rooftops. So, 
this is where we want to use the pulling the rabbit out of the hat during promotion. You want to use this during promotion throughout your content and when you're actually promoting. Examples for this would be leaning into, and we know, the product and the problem and the offer and the solutions, having a clear CTA. This is all part of the promotion. We all know how to do promotional content. In fact, most of us are standing on the top of the mountain screaming our promotional contact, content, and the mouse is like, what? When you bring in the validation and the teasing before the promoting, they're not confused. They're not wondering if it's for them. So when we pull the rabbit out of the hat, what do we do? Believe. Beliefs, teach, teach, and results. When you put together your webinar, when you put together your slideshow, you're doing this on repeat. You don't have to do it a lot of times. When you're putting out your content in your runway, you're doing this on repeat. So if you were, don't do it, because it's a waste of time, but if you were to cycle through my content and you were just to look at, aside from this month, the last 90 days, you will see all of my content on Instagram validating something by changing their belief. You might be thinking this. You might think, again, I teach organic. You might think that you need to spend a ton of money on ads to have successful launches. I used to think that too, until I was able to produce $100,000 to $300,000 launches on repeat since 2018 with no team. If I were to share that framework with you, would you be interested? What type of post would that be? Validate. Validate. If they didn't say they were interested, now I go back to the drawing board. Is it because I said 100 to 300K launches? Is it because I used the word launches? Is it because I said coaches? If I said course creators, would that be better? So if I'm unsure of that data, now what can I do to get those answers? I could post again. I could use features that are on stories and I can see, literally, which one resonates with you more? Put up a poll. Coach, entrepreneur? Content creator, there's no right answer. But I'm going to listen to what you have to say. I'm gonna have conversations with you. And I'm gonna ask my current clients and on my coaching calls, because I work with clients, I'm gonna get their feedback as well. It's really, really important. So we're changing the belief. We're teaching something and then we're backing it up with a result. Oh, look at that. There's Jim, here's a result. So Jim came to us with 236 followers on Instagram. That is not a lot of followers. 236 followers, no email list, and we had him start posting on Instagram with 236 followers. He had over a $100,000 launch on his first launch because he was able to move his audience through organic. This is no paid ads. I asked his permission and he said yes. Just about a year later, he hit a million dollars. What? 236 followers and no email list because he understood the power of who he was speaking to on Instagram. And this was a guy who refused when he came to us. He didn't want to do Instagram. He didn't want to get on TikTok. He didn't want to be on any social media platform. He did not want to be the guy walking down the street talking to the phone. And so you know what? He wasn't. He found other ways to build that organic relationship. He was still posting, but for him what worked better, he has a community text list now, is sending out tech tips. Yeah, like tech tips and hacks through his text list. And then he repurposes that, he turns that into a piece of content like a reel, and he does a voiceover. And he'll show what he's doing, and he just uses a voiceover, and it works really, really well. So, just taking you back again, these are the three phases that I really want you to focus on. You can do this in your emails when you're in runway. Remember, you're never not launching. Launches aren't just like the conversion event, you're always launching. If you're a business owner, you are always launching, and people are always watching what you're doing. So in your emails, make sure you're spending time to validate. If you have a podcast, who here has a podcast? <gasps> Look at all these guests we can have on. <laughs> we have one too, I'd love you on. In your podcast, validate the stuff that's coming up. If you're a business owner, there's a pretty good chance you have a 30,000 foot view of where the business is going, right? Like we all know if we're launching something in November, correct? Okay, who's launching in December? Is anyone doing like a Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Cool, what about January? February? March? April, May, okay, it starts to slow down a little because maybe we didn't plan that far out. But if you know what you're doing all the way up until April, then you know exactly when you can start inserting this now. And the answer is now, like yesterday. So now is a good time for you to validate the thing. Black Friday is two weeks away, is that right? 
So for the first time ever in our business, we actually are selling something for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Spoiler alert, we're actually selling it for Digital Business Evolution Wednesday, because we created our own day. Because everybody else is using Thursday, so we, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Friday, so we took Wednesday, okay? But I know it's coming. So the content that I'm putting out now, if I can get myself to put out some content, is gonna be validating. And then I'm gonna go to teasing, and then we're gonna go boom, to promotion on Wednesday. It doesn't have to be a long stretched out thing, but every time you go to launch anything, this is what you wanna do. James did a beautiful job of this with his copy cards. He don't, I don't even know if it was intentional, but him showing the process of him creating them and working on them and playing with them, I'm sure it was intentional. That was him teasing it, that was him promoting it, that was him validating it. If he wasn't getting DMs from people like, <gasps> what are those, I want those, then that's validation that, yeah, just because you're having fun with it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to sell. And there's a difference there. So one of the most commonly overlooked things when it comes to sales, and not a lot of people are talking about this, I think this is because I was a teacher. I geek out on how people learn and why people buy. So in my world, there's six different types of buyers. There's three on this screen and three on the next screen. If you are only speaking to one buyer, then you're missing out on a lot of money and a lot of impact. So I gave them cute little names. We've got Skeptical Steve, and he's a critical thinker. A lot of us are this. So you can resonate with any of these people. And spoiler alert, you're probably more than one. You probably are more than one. And I'm gonna ask you in a moment why. So Skeptical Steve, he, he doesn't trust easily, he's got lots of questions, he needs the details. And so what that means for you, because the first column's for them and the second column's for you, is you're gonna have to have patience with him or her. You're gonna have to help them overcome objections and build trust. You're probably gonna have to use a lot of social proof. The second one is Analytical Alley. Do we have any Skeptical Steves in here? Be honest. Okay. I'm like, I'm looking at you, yeah, Mr. Amazon Review, <laughs> right? Like if you read a lot of Amazon reviews before you buy something, you're probably a little skeptical and that's okay, it's not a bad thing. Ali, she's got a specific goal in mind. She's like, I need the research, I need the planning, does this fit in my life, does this make sense, I wanna read the reviews, there needs to be a pro list and a con list. And so for you, slow down to make the decision, right? Give, give her space, give her time or him time. When we have a short open cart, which changed a lot for us in our business, I used to do like a three-week open cart for our signature program, and thanks to James and the team, we now do a five-day open cart, and that was so scary to go from three weeks to five days, because that's how I had always run it. But Analytical Alley, probably, and Skeptical Steve, which day did they buy on? The last, the last day. So when we get frustrated, the business owners, because the launch isn't going our way, guilty, and we're like, oh, I should just throw in the towel, there's no point, I knew the other shoe was gonna drop, we have a lot of Allies and Steves in our audience that just aren't ready yet. I believe it's disempowering, and if you do it, it's okay, but I believe it's disempowering to use language like, you know, if, you're, if you haven't bought yet, like you're just not ready, it's not for you, you need to elevate yourself before you can work with me. I think it's disempowering. I get it. I get why it makes people move, but for the skeptical Steves and the analytical Allies and the value VIX, not great. So Value Vic, he, he wants to negotiate. He wants to see the whole picture. What's this gonna do for me? How's this different than anything that I've done before, right? What's the value, the value, the value? So for this one, again, showing a lot of testimonials, maybe even making sure that you master your messaging, but maybe even offering guarantees. That makes him feel or her feel a little bit more safe in their body. Okay, I see the value. I see the other transformations. And our other three buyers, we've got Emotional Elise, do we have any emotional leases on here? You just buy from on a whim. You're like, this feels good. We all tend to do this when it's either really, really cheap, like you're standing at line at TJ Maxx and you see a candle and you're like, yeah, I need this. This is cute, right? Or like the food. Or if it's something that we just really, 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 really want. Like the shoes or the bag or the new laptop. And so we will logically make it make sense in our brain because emotionally we want it so badly. So Elise will often buy based on emotion. She or he does want to feel emotion, so it's important that you use emotional words in your messaging. But also know that this person is probably the most common person to ask for a refund, which is why it's your job to make sure they get a quick win after they purchase something, okay? Because I bought on a whim, oh my God, this is like, QVC, two o'clock in the morning, 
right? And then the next morning, like, why is there a $700 charge on my credit card? Yeah, that's a lease. So they buy on the spot. I love DMing with people. This is the person who will slide into my DMs. How can I work with you? And then all of a sudden, a payment's going through. And I'm like, where did you come from? Have the conversation. Financial Fred, it's just the purchase price and the ROI. It just show me the stats, give me the money, what's going to happen, I want to see the money. And so for you, discounts, incentives, bonus add-ons, stuff like that, anything dealing with the financials. And then the last one is needs Nancy. Very re results-driven. Do I need this? I want it, but do I need it? Have we all had that conversation, that battle in our brain? Like, I want it, but do I need it? That's needs Nancy. So pain point focused is going to be really, really huge here. What have I already tried? What isn't working? I love speaking pleasure point, but for needs Nancy, we want to make sure that they're seeing the picture of if you don't move, then you're going to be in the same place that you've been, and what I see is that you don't like that place. Okay? So we have different types of buyers. When you're creating content, make sure your content is speaking to all of the buyers, especially in a launch, because as we get to cart close, it's really easy to kind of just like throw in the towel the last 24 hours, right? But if you do that, you're leaving so much opportunity for yourself and for your buyers on the table. So you can walk through the finish line or you can sprint and run through the finish line. It's ultimately up to you. Phase five is gonna be the post-launch or the encore. This is where you would do something like a FOMO promo. You're gonna celebra celebrate what happened. You're gonna recap. You're gonna shout out what's already going on in the program that people missed out for. If you have a downsell, an additional offer, a wait list for next time, this, is, this goes in the content. This is really important. Don't forget to do this content. Especially if you're doing a traditional launch vehicle and you're taking all these leads through this whole experience and then remember, some people don't buy and you're like, whatever. What happened to the relationship? What happened to the no like and trust? Because I didn't pay you, you're not going to just love on me and give me value anymore? Because I didn't pay you, you're not going to show me what's actually going on? Or you don't care that I might come back around? I don't remember who said it yesterday, but it's I actually I think it was James. I think. The launch now is, is like who is in your launch vehicle now is really for who might convert for the launch next time, especially if you have high ticket. Our entryway program is 5K. How dare I just assume that someone's going to come into my world and purchase 5K not knowing me? This post-launch content is so important. It's so important. So some examples here, of course, are, you know, what's going on? Last week I taught this group of people this particular thing. And again, now, watch this. You go right into validate. Would you be interested if I gave you that same framework and you just recycle the whole thing again? Maybe not the same content, but you're just getting validation and they're like, okay, yeah, I want to learn this thing. I didn't sign up, but I'm so grateful you're still willing to give me value and you see value in me even though I didn't pay you. And so now you just go back to the beginning and you start validating. So, oh, this is a spin on something that James teaches. I'm, I'm guessing that you have probably taught this in next level. Have we taught this in next level? Yes. Yes? Okay, cool. So in the smallest circle is, is often what your clients know, then what they don't know, and then what they don't know, they don't know. So an example, we work with a lot of health and fitness professionals. So an example in that field, we have some um, physical therapists. What you might know is that you're bloated, you're getting headaches, and you just don't feel well in your body. What you don't know is that it could be from mold. And what you don't know you don't know is that there could be mold in your home or in your food that by you ingesting it, it's actually causing the symptoms that you know of. And so it's my job to show you that. Yeah? What you know is that you want more leads and want to make more money. What you might not know is how to do that organically. What you don't know you don't know is that it's a lot easier than you think and you don't have to batch content. Oh, thank goodness. Who hates batching content? Yeah, not into it. People are like, do you want my content calendar? No. <laughs> Sounds terrible, right? So the spin on this is here. PSP, not like PlayStation, but PSP. So you're going to go through the validate and the tease and the promote, and you're also going to go through your PSP. Your problem awareness content is for the person who just came to your platform. So you find someone, you start following them, and what you should be doing for that person is you should be calling out the problem that they're feeling. 
It's very easy for someone to, to feel the problem. I know what I, I know, and I know that I don't like not making 10K a month. I'm struggling losing the baby weight. I want to learn how to play guitar. So you're focusing on the problem to your newest, coldest leads. Your warmer leads are actually with you for the solution. They know that you're the expert in the problem, so they're sitting there going, okay, Deborah, just give me the solution. I've been following you, I love you, I trust you, give me the solution. So your warmer leads are here for the solution, and your hottest leads are here for the product. They're like, yeah, I wanna buy it, let me buy the thing. When's the program open? I'm on the wait list, I'm hot, I'm ready. I know that you solved my problem, I know that you have a solution, I already know, like, and trust you, you've got the credibility and the clout, cool, I wanna buy from you. If you PSP in your content, you will be speaking to everyone in your audience. Because remember, there are always people that are coming into your audience for the first time. They need problems. They need problem awareness. There are always gonna be people that have been around and they need solutions. If you only talk about problems, they're gonna leave. And you're always gonna have people that are ready to buy, so they need to hear about your product or your offer. Does this make sense? So all the time, you get to do this stuff, which is why you'll probably, now that I said it, your, your reticular activating system is now firing. Your RAS, now you're gonna see it. Some of the best entrepreneurs and content creators out there that you probably already follow, every once in a while, they'll do a reintroduction post and you're like, what? Like you've been following them for a long time, they're like, hey, just wanted to reintroduce myself. Like, really? It feels so lame. But they're speaking to their newest audience. You get to do that on a subconscious level when you go problem, solution, problem. So yeah, we can be like, hey, you're new here. This is who I am. That's fine. Do that every once in a while. But more importantly, this might be what you're struggling with. What you don't know is that I used to struggle with that too. And then you move to the next one. Here's a solution. It's a five-step framework. The good news is you don't have to learn all five steps right now. The even better news is that when you learn the five steps, you're finally gonna get out of the place you've been stuck in. And the hottest is, and if you want to learn all of that, our signature program Empower, doors are opening in just a week. The product that you've been waiting for. Cycle your content and your emails through your PSP. I have a Google Sheet. I like Google Sheets. Sorry for all my Excel people. I have a Google Sheet, and I write in it. And there's three columns. Problem, solution, product. And when I have a coaching call, and clients ask me a question, or someone slides into me, my DMs, or I do market research, or whatever that might be, I start to put ideas into my spreadsheet. So, problems, they're burnt out by one-on-one -on -one clients. That's a huge problem for our clients. Registered dietitians, personal trainers, they're tapped on time. That's a problem. Another problem, they're burnt out by the constant content creation. They're on the hamster wheel of content creation. It's not converting. Solutions. And it doesn't necessarily have to be for those things, but solutions that I could talk about is having a plan for social media that's not a content scheduler, because I don't think that's effective, right? Diversifying your leads and where they're coming from, so on and so forth. So you can have tabs open. So this is like macro, like really big problem solution product, and then micro, I have folders in my phone that are broken down by my content pillars, which I talk about in that other training, okay? So that's how I create all of my content. So, what should you post every day? How are we on time? I don't have a timer. Cool. So what should we post every day? Like when you're in between launches, even though you're never not launching, what do we post? Hold on. How do we do the rabbit? Beliefs. 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 Teach. Results. Results. Okay, cool. See, you're not gonna forget it now. So you think I'm crazy, but it's psychology. All right, I'm gonna teach you a five-layer sandwich to the everyday post. Every day, all of your posts, even your emails. First thing that you're gonna do, and this is how captions convert, is you're going to attract with a hook or a headline, and we've all heard that before. It's really important that this ho the hook or the headline is making someone stick around. Like Brandon was saying earlier, using identifiers here is huge. So when you do say something like, content creators or coaches or dietitians or whomever you're speaking to, the people who identify dads, they're going to tune in. There is a lot of noise on the internet. The hook is arguably the most, it is the most important part because if they don't stop, then you've lost them. So when James before was talking about TikTok, the hooks are so important. And um, Brock Johnson does a really cool thing with his hooks specifically on TikTok. If you're not doing it, you should try it. It's really hard. I think it's hard, but you're a, a word ninja. 
your hook is actually on a loop. So when you can get your hook into a loop, it's creating someone, it makes someone stay longer, and we want watch time, right? We want view time, especially on TikTok and Reels. So I would give you an example, but I'm really bad at it, so I will try my best. But you start your hook sentence that ends the reel or the TikTok so that the person doesn't realize they're watching it a second time. Yeah. Think about the five ways that you can blah, blah, blah. You do the whole thing, and then at the end of it, you're like, so then you should probably think about the way that the five ways that you can blah, blah, blah. You're like, it just happened. So you accidentally watch it twice. And then you probably watch it a third time because you're like, what just happened? <laughs> he got me. Okay? Your hook is really, really important. The second piece of your sandwich, most people don't do this piece. Most people dive right into the main point. And if you dive right into the main point, you have not preheated the oven. You have to warm them up. The second piece of your post, or an email, should create intrigue and context. It is your job to connect your hook to the content. Why should I stick around? Okay, you got me on the hook. Why should I stick around? It's 2022, it's almost 2023. You having a good hook isn't enough. You having a pretty picture isn't enough, and you being funny on reels is not enough. Why should I stick around? Well, this is the part that usually is the place where it's relatable. So you have your hook, and then you go into why it's relatable, because I went through that too. I just recently helped a bunch of clients do the same exact thing. I know because I struggled with it for seven years. After going to 38 different doctors, I figured out how to blah, blah, blah. I haven't taught them anything yet. I'm still validating. It's very meta. Everything that I'm teaching you happens inside of one post, one email, across your weeks and weeks and weeks of launching. So intrigue or context happens before the main point. Now, we all know how to do the main point. Most of us jump right to the main point, and if you're anything like me, this is probably your default. I'm gonna educate you, I'm gonna teach you, it's the five ways, it's the seven steps, the things not to do, I'm gonna bust a myth, it's really easy to teach. But if people only wanted to hear you teach, then they would go to an encyclopedia. Nobody wants to learn from an encyclopedia. Are they even still around? Do you remember going to the library and having to take them, <laughs> like photocopy them? Yeah. So in your main point, this is where you get to do the really boring stuff that you're really good at. You could show as smart as you are, you can give all your steps, your framework, your, your methodology, it's all proprietary, and you can showcase how amazing you are. But then, most people go to the call to action. Don't do that, stop doing that. There's another layer. Because if you just taught me a lot of stuff, I need time to what? Digest it, process it. Think about if I agree with you. I need to create my own ideas around what you just taught me. So before you go into the call to action, I want you to go into your transition. The transition is kind of like a CTA part one. The traditional CTA is the CTA part two, and we'll get there in a moment. The transition is now where you connect your main point to your offer. So after your hook, you have context to create a connection between what you're about to teach. After you teach, you have another connecting piece that's gonna to go to your call to action. This is why it's so important to blah, blah, blah. Do you understand how this is going to change your life? Can you see how this worked for those other people? I'm so grateful that I finally started journaling because then when I did, X, Y, Z happened. And now, boom, lay it on them with the call to action. So. Comment yes below if you're interested. Head to the link in my bio to sign up. Reply back with tell me more if you want me to send the information. Register with the link. Click the button, come to my free training. You don't wanna skip the part before it, it's really important, and just to show you visually, there's your whole sandwich. That's how we build it out. We're calling them in with a hook or a headline. Really, really, really attention grabbing, using identifiers in that. Subconsciously calling them in, <gasps> this is for me. Every now and then, a fun hook is also fun. Just like, they lied. Who lied, you know? My highest open rate ever on an email still to this day was like 98% open rate. And my subject is a little bit clickbait. My subject was, we broke up. And like, we're married, so everyone thought that we broke up. I was talking about my relationship with food and my, old, and my eating disorder, but that was my highest open rate. So you can have like a really kind of polarizing, myth-busting, 
relevant, trendy type of hook, or you can just call it out as it is. Digital entrepreneurs, not this is for you, that's a little lame, but if you're a digital entrepreneur struggling to make sales and spending a ton of money on ads, I would highly encourage you to stick around. Boom, next part is going to be my intrigue. I've taught the same framework to hundreds and hundreds of clients and they've generated over $20 million in sales never having to use paid ads. Boom, the main point. What I teach here is organic content strategy. The most important thing is understanding how to lay out a piece of organic content. Here are the five steps. Boom, 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 boom. Then you go to the next point, which is going to be your transition. Could you imagine how much this would change your business if you were able to put out content like that that built no like, trust, credibility, and authority so easily? And then we go to the, we go to the CTA. If you want my free training on this, where I actually give it all away, and a 100-page workbook that's going to go with it, do something, DM me, tap here, right? Very simple. So Gina has under 2,000 followers. She did when we started working together, 50 people on her email list. Y'all, most of our clients don't have email lists, by the way, not until they start working with us, so they generally are small. She has a nine to five job as a registered dietitian, and she has got a lot of one-on-ones. And so she just started simply following the everyday post and putting together some group programs. We started working together in 2021. You can see that she jumped from 30K a year all the way up to 106,000 a year. And this year she's at 175,000 and she has a launch cart closed today. I, this morning I checked in with her, it was a $30,000 launch. So she's about to hit $200,000 for the year. Just implementing the everyday post every day. And if it's not every day, it's most days. She does it on Instagram, she's putting it into her emails and she's making sure that she's always validating teasing and promoting whatever it is that she's working on by first changing their Please. and then and then sharing results. Very simple. How much should you be giving away for free when you are teaching your content? You may have seen me talk about this before. I talk about it a lot. Not everybody in the room agrees with me and that's totally fine. I personally believe we should be giving it all away and here's the thing. There's two schools of thought here. When it comes to content, there is a school of thought that when you went to the mall back in the day, they walked around with a plate of like chicken with a stick and they're like, oh, you want to try our chicken? Sure, and then you try it and then they say, if you like it, you want to come in and buy a plate of food. And if you like it, maybe you go in. So if you were to give them the entire plate of food and they gave you the chicken and the rice and the side with the broccoli and you ate the whole plate and they said, did you like it? And you said, yes. They said, do you want to come in and buy one? You say, I'm full. Conceptually, I get this. Don't give all your content away for free because you're going to fill them up. In my experience, that is not true. In my experience, and that's all I can speak from, what has worked in my business and all of our clients' businesses is this. Can you listen to your favorite music on Spotify, Pandora, YouTube, Apple Music? And can you get your favorite music for free off of some of those platforms? Okay. Has anyone gone to the, a concert or a festival or a show in the last year? Give or take, how much was your ticket? $100, $200, $35. But aren't you full from all the music you can listen to for free? Why would you spend money on a ticket when you could just listen to it for free? Different experience. Why else? It's fun. What else? Oh, hey. <laughs> You said if your front stage you get touched by the musician. <laughs> what else? It's a it's a condensed experience. Oh, is that what you said? Yeah, just it's condensed in one place. Yeah, the energy, the vibe. You get to dress up. Maybe you have some drinks or some other party things. I don't judge. It's a completely different thing. I mean, this one it's like hello, you're outside. There's like what the Brooklyn Bridge. That's pretty epic. That's not the same thing as Pandora or Spotify in my room. So when I look at content, I give it all away for free. Is someone going to binge all of my content and never take a course of mine because they're gonna take my content, run with it, implement it, and build an incredible business? Yeah, no. No. Is it true that we have people in our paid programs that don't even get those types of results? They literally pay $5,000 and then like leave. And I'm like, did you even launch? Like, have you, I mean, we take attendance down every call, but like you've missed three calls in a row, so we're reaching out to you. 
Like how, how are you missing three calls in a row when you've just invested $5,000? So I do give it all away for free because I'm looking at it in, from a different lens. For me, the information is, is, is it's everywhere. It's Googleable, it's YouTubeable, it's searchable. I'm proprietary. The way that I teach it, maybe, is proprietary. People buy from people, and most of us in here, if we're coaches and digital entrepreneurs and marketers, we're the people they're buying from. So I do give my information away for free. I'm just really strategic on when and how. It's not just me teaching, because people don't want to buy from an encyclopedia. I'm going through changing their belief of everything they think. I'm also validating their beliefs that I agree with. That's really important, too. We don't always want to be like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. <laughs> Everything you've been taught is wrong. That's disempowering. No, you're right. That makes so much sense. I agree with you. That's why I love doing it that way. And after I change their belief, then I teach. And then I back it up with results or case studies. So growth on social media, obviously, you know this. It can happen in a lot of different places. But these are the easiest places because they're free. So going live, more importantly, doing collaborative lives, because when I do a live with you, I just borrowed your audience. And if you're in the same type of industry that I'm in, your audience is probably my ideal client, which is really cool. Takeovers are awesome, especially if you pre-record them and send them to your friends that are in this room, because they totally get what you're doing. And they'll probably barter with you. You, do, you put mine up for you, and I'll put mine up, blah, 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 right? When you do a takeover, it's a pre-recorded thing where you should be changing a belief, teaching a thing, and then just telling them if they liked it to come over to your page. You don't need to share a testimonial on your friend's page when you take over. You definitely don't want to drop some sort of an opt-in or a call to action other than if you liked it, if we vibe, come to my page. And then what do you think you do on your page that day? You could share results and or. Yeah, drop an opt-in. Promote something of your own. Make sure that day you're giving value as well. You should be every day, but drop an opt-in. We can do affiliates, keywords, SEO, location tags. Did you know that you could put a location tag on an Instagram story and you can just like hide it behind words? So Mike and I lived in an RV for 14 months. We traveled around 27 different states and we had left New York City. So in New York City, I got a lot of engagement. It's like, it's New York City. When we were in the middle of Idaho, my engagement was dropping. So judge me or don't. When we were in the middle of Idaho, I would tag New York City and I would hide it in my stories. Or I would tag Las Vegas. I always get a lot of views when I tag Las Vegas and I would hide it in my stories, but it would boost my engagement like crazy. And it's a snowball. So the way the algorithm works is if a lot of people are seeing it or liking it or commenting on it, whether it's a story or a post or a reel, it doesn't matter, then more people get pushed the thing. So from dipping down really low because we were in the middle of nowhere to posting something that was a little bit more populated or relevant, it would boost my engagement and it would snowball even more. And that would get you over to like the explored page or to get shared. My favorite thing to do to get shared, I, I'm gonna teach you at the end, but we don't care about going viral. So these are the last few slides here. Going viral can actually really, really, really hurt your growth. It happens all the time, it happens to our clients, it happens to my friends. I've had friends go viral for the most ridiculous things. <clears throat> like on TikTok. For teaching people how to cut a line. It makes no sense. <laughs> no, I've had friends go viral just because they're, they're very attractive and it's gone viral, but they're like women's empowerment coaches and now they have 200,000 men following them and they're just like, this doesn't matter. And not only does it not matter, but now you ruin my engagement because you're not actually looking at my content, which shows that now it's 200 divided by 200,000 instead of 200 divided by 1,000. And so now everything kind of hits the fan. So going viral should never be the goal, never. We wanna make sure, this is specific to Instagram, we wanna make sure that we are using all of our features. So polls, quizzes, questions, and the slider bar, use them every single day. In fact, they should be in your first story every single day. So every day when you start again, and this is the thing that I love about stories, and I built a multiple, multiple seven-figure business off Instagram stories, quite literally, every day is a new reality show. Treat it like it. People want to come back and they want to see what's happening on the Kardashians today. They want to see what's happening on whatever, insert love is blind or whatever. 
Your feed, your stories get to become a reality TV show. You are the director, you are the actor, you are the actress, you are the writer, you are all of it. So every single day, you want to start your stories fresh. Good morning, I'm back. We're starting a new episode. On today's episode, you're going to expect blah, blah, blah. You don't have to actually tell them. My story that I put up almost every single day has changed. It used to be the same. So back in New York, none of you were probably were following me back then. It was a totally different account, but I know Mike knows what it was. Every single day for like four years in a row, I too do handstands. And so I put my phone on the ground under my face and I hit the hands free and I do a handstand and I talk to the camera and handstand. It's a pattern interrupt. Everybody else is talking like normal people. So when you see someone upside down, whoa, pattern interrupt. If you put your, your story in black and white, that is also a pattern interrupt because most people are not using black and white. If you do it all the time, it becomes your brand, which is cool, right? Brand recognition. So every single day for about four years, I would start with a handstand. It didn't matter what I was saying. It didn't matter what I was doing. In fact, a lot of times I wasn't saying anything but I was starting in a handstand. Now, maybe because I've gotten a little older, I've been starting with a cup of coffee or incense, like just burning sage or incense, but I do it every single morning. And so what happens is, number one, I'm not always around with a cute mug. I have a photo album in my phone. <laughs> Hack. I have a photo album in my phone of a lot of different mornings of a lot of different coffee mugs and a lot of different incense. And I just go to, it's literally called AM Vibes, and every morning, if it's not a real boomerang, it's a, it's a reused, repurposed one. So I have an entire photo album of like 30 things that I would do in the morning with coffee. Well, I drink it, but different pictures and boomerangs. And I just put one of those up. And it always starts with a poll, a quiz, a question, or a slider. Now the key here is the 90-10 rule. 90% of the time that you put up quizzes, questions, polls, and sliders, you want to make it zero barrier to entry. Do you like peanut butter or almond butter? Peanut butter? Cool. Toilet paper over or under? Awesome. Which mastermind logo do you like better, top or bottom? Should I wear this jacket or that jacket? Do you put coffee creamer in or are you team black? No barrier to entry. It's not embarrassing. It's not invasive. You're not making me think. What you are doing, though, is your training to click. So now, if 90% of the time this stuff is silly, the 10% that I want to put up, what podcast episodes do you want to hear from Mike and I, my audience is already trained to answer. They love clicking and answering. And guess what happens when they click? It boosts my engagement. It gets me more story views. Typically, they're really dumb things, though. So Mike and I are doing something kind of crazy tomorrow. What do you think we're doing? Getting a puppy, closing on a house, driving across the country, or buying a boat? And then guess what happens? When we do it, I now just have, now I have more content. Because when we did the thing that we did, which I don't remember what that was, because I think, well, we, did, we didn't buy a boat, but we did buy another house a year ago today, got the dog, and drove across the country. So I'm not sure which one it was. But then I got buy-in, so when I finally was ready to share with my audience, they were like, which one was it? Because we do have the cutest dog. Okay, single carousels are not dead. Carousels are not dead on Instagram. Yes, reels are very popular, but the cool thing with a carousel, and this is the way that I treat it, I treat a carousel, that's one where you can slide through, I treat it as a master class. I will teach an entire framework in a carousel so that the person has to keep sliding through and then at the end, there will be a call to action and it's not always to join something or buy something. This is an incredible way to validate. Before I actually go and put together a sales page or an offering, I'm gonna teach the whole thing right here. If it gets a lot of likes and shares and comments and saves and people DMing me how helpful it was, well, guess who's putting on a masterclass next week? And you know what the theme is going to be? This. And what am I going to teach? This. They told me they want it. Also, if you didn't know, in Instagram, with a carousel, you can have up to 10 slides. If someone does not engage on your first slide, like, comment, save, or share, that's engaging, Instagram will show them the second one. And if they don't engage on the second one, they'll show them the third when they're scrolling. And if they don't, so on and so forth, to 10. You literally have 10 opportunities to get in front of them off of one post that you wouldn't have had if it was a singular post. And yes, reels are way more 
powerful right now. But carousels, if done correctly, there are entire accounts still that are just carousel accounts because they're so valuable. So when I talk about giving it all away for free, this is where I test it. You could test it in a reel too. And when it does do well, not only can I turn it into a masterclass or a training or a paid whatever, I could turn it into a lead mat magnet, I could turn it into an email sequence, and I can just regurgitate exactly what I said, but now I can say it and it could be a reel. I could expand on it and create a podcast episode. I could do a YouTube video. So this is a great place to test if something is punchy, if it's working, if they like it. Relevant and, tra and, and trending. So this was from a couple months ago. Does anyone know who that is? Yeah, Anna Delvey. So at the time, that show on Netflix was trending, and so I used her face. By using something that is trending, you will get more views. People will be more inclined to share it because it's trending. Ha ha, it's funny, it's relevant. Oh my gosh, Anna Delvey. This got reshared a ridiculous amount of times. When the experts tell you, just post more to get more sales. I don't have time for you, I don't have time for this. And that's what she had said in that frame in her accent, which I will not try, <laughs> okay? The cool thing too is Canva literally gives you what's, what's trending. So you can type in in Canva, Twitter quote, you could type in carousel, they'll give you things that are trending and then you could just recreate them and change them, make minor tweaks, put your colors in, your font in and all of those different things and boom, you can have it done in minutes. Outsource this, have someone on your team do it. And then this is my absolute favorite. So before, we talked about borrowing people's audiences, right? If I do a live with you, I get to borrow your audience. Maybe your people will come hang out with me on my page. That's the hope. If I say something that's a little polarizing, a little spicy, there's a pretty good chance that somebody else might share it, especially when it's spicy, because there might be another coach or creator or entrepreneur out there who feels the way that I feel, but they haven't had the cojones to say it. So because they don't have the guts to say it, there's a pretty good chance they might reshare it. And when they reshare it, what they're telling their audience is like, yes, yes, I agree with this, but I was too scared to say it myself. Or, this is so good, there's just no point in me rewriting it, but this is exactly how I feel. That's why we reshare things, right? Or you see something that's funny and you're like, this was hilarious, you share it on your page, you share it on your stories. And when you do that, you get to borrow their audience. When I put this up, and this was a whole carousel, there was eight of them. And it basically busts a lot of some of the myths that are out there, that mindset alignment and manifestation and attraction are great and they will become pieces of your business, but strategy, understanding, comprehension, implementation, action, system frameworks are the things that actually build your business. The flowy stuff is like decorating your house. The blah stuff, the foundational stuff, is literally the foundation to your house. And so I put all of the slides up because there is a mystical, thought that we don't have to do anything and we could just sit back and we don't want to have to work hard and I just don't believe that's true. This got shared by so many other coaches and entrepreneurs, specifically in the business coaching space. And so I got in front of hundreds of thousands of other people that were my ideal client. Pretty cool. So when you do something like that, I will just caution you, it's less about being anti-vanilla and it's more about being pro-chocolate. And this is a really fine line to dance or maybe it's vice versa for you but it's really easy to say the things that we don't like. It's really easy to create content about your pain. Oh, I know all the problems you have, I'm just gonna keep pouring salt on that wound. It's really easy to tear other businesses down to try to lift yours up, but no one in the room would do that. We all build our businesses on integrity. So instead, how can you sit with, meditate with, journal? What do you stand for? Who do you stand for? Create that lens and, well, find that lens and create through that lens. This is what I believe. This is what I see to be true. This is what works for me. This is what I love. This is what you're gonna get when you come into my world. As opposed to, I hate this, that's wrong, she's bad, he did it the, the, the backwards way. So it's less about being the anti-vanilla creator and more about being the pro-chocolate creator. And when you're creating, your first step is to do what? Change the belief and then you teach and then you give the results. The results can be yours, they can be Gary V's, they could be a past client. So forget about going viral, make sure you're just out there giving value time and time and time and time and time again. It's not supposed to happen after one post, it's not supposed to happen after one week. I mean, Mike is adorable, so maybe I would have said yes, but it took a lot more than one date 
before I was ready to marry him. It took a lot more than one week of going out together before I was like, you know what, yeah, we should move in together. We don't want to go viral. We want to build businesses that are sustainable and scalable. I don't think anyone in here is here for like the overnight success thing. Certainly not the conversations that I've been having with you. So spend the time that it takes. Stop trying to be popular and instead make sure that you are creating on purpose. It's very easy to do the things that are flashy. There's a lot of great marketers out there. There are a lot of less great coaches. Again, not in this room. And it's not about getting people when you're creating content, it's about giving. It can sometimes feel like a single edge sword type of thing. Like you're like, this is like, you know the friendships where you're like, I'm the only one putting in effort? That's how organic content sometimes feels. But I promise you, there's someone at the back of your page, at the bottom of your post, who's sitting quietly, yesing every single thing that you're doing. In fact, I worked with a mentor a couple years ago. We were in, I was in her high-level mastermind. It was like $25,000 to get in, you know, like a big, big ticket mastermind. There were 10 of us in there, and we were at our first in-person. This was like 2018. And we all started talking. I don't know how it came up, but we realized that not one of us in the room had ever commented, liked, or DM'd the girl who was our mastermind host. <laughs> Never. She's like, wait a minute, you all paid me $25,000. You all came out of nowhere. I'm like, I did not come out of nowhere. I've been watching you on bodybuilding.com and YouTube for, since like 2015. I've been watching you for years. She's like, but why haven't you ever commented? I'm like, I didn't need to. I didn't need to have a conversation with her. Everything she said hit. Every way she moved made sense. I liked her. I knew that she had the solution to the problem that I had. I, like how, I just liked how she showed up, how she presented herself. And so I was waiting for her to open up a mastermind. And the day that she did, I bought, I bought into it. And so did nine other girls who had never liked or commented on any of her stuff. And you know what's funny? I've told that story, and my clients say the exact same thing to me. And I'm like, that's crazy. How many times, and I don't know what your launches are like, but we'll have people buy, 5K is our entry point. We'll have people buy, and I'm like, I don't know who that is. I don't know where they came from. And then they'll tell me their story of how they've been watching for two and a half years. They've wanted to join Empower, our signature program. I'm like, where have you been? There's somebody watching from the back. That's who you're giving it for. It's probably actually not the person who's really loud in the front. In my experience, the people who are really loud in the front don't, don't usually buy. They just come to like every launch. You're like, hits you again. <laughs> Yeah, we say their names, I won't call them out here, but there are people, we literally say their names on our team, we're like, yeah, there she is, like, hey, so good to see you here again, so great. Are you doing anything with your business, right? And then don't worry about selling. The more you can just show up and serve and validate and tease and promote, the more that you can use psychology of problem, solution, prob uh, product, they will just buy. It might just take a little bit longer, but in my experience, and I know we're still new to ads, what has it been, a year and a half? Our organic crushes our ads. Crushes it. And I know it takes a while, and our ads are doing, are doing well. There's just nothing like it. There's nothing like organic. And so for me, I am in the DMs, I'm having conversations, and there are coaches who would say that I'm crazy for doing that. In fact, we're doing a beta right now. It's $500 to beta something new for us. And I'm in the DMs. $500, but I'm like, yeah, but lifetime customer value, what could this relationship turn into? This person is not a credit card. This is a human, right? Organic content is all about the human relationships that you get to build through the words that you say. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, I invite you to be a part of our ripple effect and share it with a friend. And please, if you feel called, take 30 seconds to leave a five-star review and I'll be forever grateful. Until next time, cheers to your evolution.